welcome to my very first monthly progress vlog. So you can see what I do every month and also for myself to see what I did every month pretty much. Um, this is also as an extra to project videos that I'm trying to make. For example the, the blouse that which the first part probably will have gone up by now as I finished filming that by now. Um, but also because this is the very first trying to do a monthly progress vlog, this will also be more of an introduction to the projects I am currently working on. Which, as you might have seen in the blouse project, somewhere in the background there are some other projects that are not necessarily just sewing and are not necessarily for daily wear. Aside from just liking to sew, uh, daily wear is actually something that I don't, that I don't do all that often. Uh, I'm a cosplayer and tharper and letter crafter and pretty much I have too much hobbies. Um, <laughs> though they are all related, well most of them are related to costumes in some sort of way. So um, yeah, I just want to show you what I'm working on currently and uh, in the rest of this vlog probably what I do in the rest of the month of June. But before I introduce you to the projects, let me just show you where the magic happens. This is my hobby room. Uh, it's a, sp it's a, I think three by three square meter space, and um, yeah, I have it pretty much crammed full with stuff. Um, we moved into this house about a year ago. I claimed this room. It is mine now, and uh, this is basically where I spend most of my days right now, <laughs> crafting away at all sorts. Let's start with the project that's mostly on my mind right now. Um, I am making a Karanthir cosplay from The Witcher The Wild Hunt. It is for my boyfriend to wear. And I have been working on this about one and a half year right now. This is a torso. Um, let me see if I can walk around it without falling over stuff. Yeah. There we go. As you can see the entire armor is nearing completion, which is great because, as I said, I've been working around on this for about one and a half, almost nearing two years now. Um, shoes are there and some other leg parts. I'll probably edit in a photo of what it looks like about right now when it's completely worn. It was supposed to be finished for Elfia Harzuilens earlier this year. But due to the coronavirus, it was cancelled. Uh, these are what's supposed to be the hands. So it's mostly the fingers of the hands that still need to be done. The shoes need some paint. Um, some fabricy stuff still needs to happen down there. And uh, depending on how much time I have left after that, I will probably make the staff because the staff is a pretty in integral part of the costume. And. Um, if I have even more time left and still feel like spending time on this thing, I might make the sex sextant, sextant, sex thingy, uh, you know, the navigating instrument. Um, yeah, what you can also see behind that, behind Karantir's helmet, oh, before I forget it, what I really like about the helmet right now, it is, the face part is detachable by magnet, so... My boyfriend can take it off and on as he pleases. He can actually wear it with his glasses, so that's a nice plus. He's still not going to be able to see much, but hey, he will at least be able to wear his glasses. Anyway, what I was about to say, what you can see behind it, is some random body parts about there, and there, and here. Um, for my boyfriend, I'm building Karanthir. For myself, I am building Weaves, also from The Witcher The Wild Hunt. You can see her red hat somewhere down there. Um, that costume is also nearing completion. It was also supposed to be done for Elfia Harzuilens earlier this year. I believe her face is somewhere over here. It's also a picture of me when I was, I think, five or so. Um, so yes, um, Weaves is also work in progress. Uh, an almost complete progress. Still not happy with the face and the hair needs to be attached and I think that's pretty much it. And then another project I'm working on is this leather armor. It's also for my boyfriend. Um, 
yeah, it doesn't really have a specific event to go to. Um, that's the back. This piece is here is the front. And the remainder of the front is somewhere over here. Still needs to be stitched. As I said, this armor does not have a specific event. I joined a leatherworking course. It was a year-long online course of the Black Raven Armory. It's a do-it-at-your-own-pace kind of thing. Um, so the course has been finished about a year ago. But I'm still working on this armor. So I started this course and was like, Hello boyfriend, you are getting a chest armor from leather whether you like it or not. So, here it is. Still needs to be stitched. Um, currently in the process of stitching the armhole, this part. So, everything, the stamping, the hand stitching. Uh, yeah, it's um, also a work in progress. So, those are the main projects I'm working on right now, plus the blouse that you can see in the more extended uh, project video. I decided only to start filming when I started the blouse, so that's why I'm not going to make project videos for the other projects, because they're long going already. Um, you can see in progress pictures of those on my Instagram, uh, at Marais Armory. Uh, I'll probably link it down below or something. Oh, it's really weird to say that right now, because I have never actually put up anything on YouTube except for streams. But yeah, as two years ago I did some streaming, I loved it, I really enjoyed it, but right now I can't seem to schedule the time for it. You have to be on at certain times, and uh, that's why I decided to start, well, just filming, because I can do that in my own spare moments. You don't necessarily need three hour slots for it, which with streaming, it's not too handy if you have only a quarter or half an hour of a time of your time uh, you can't really set up a stream so that's why i decided to do youtube now yeah i'm looking forward to it and hopefully in the rest of june i'll be able to show you some more progress on well these projects so the thing is when you plan to do monthly progress vlogs maybe you should actually film some progress anyway um, currently i'm painting these boots for Caranthier. um I made them from Warbla and they're all attached on the inside with elastic straps so that I can put these over his actual shoes and they can just shape along when he walks. So yes, um, I am planning to do some painting on this. Meanwhile, maybe a bit of chatting, I guess. I hope that makes it a bit more interesting. Um, because I realized that in the previous segment where I practically introduced my craft room. I did not actually introduce myself. And I guess that with this still being one of the very first videos I put up on YouTube on hopefully what will become more regular YouTube uploading, I figured this might actually be a nice moment to introduce myself. Uh, let me grab some paint and then we can start off. This paint dries rather quickly, so that's why I'm not using so much at once. This, I, I love this silver paint. It's really, really pigmented. But that does mean that to get a bit of an even coat, you don't want to just uh, slap it on everywhere. Uh, or paint it in big strokes immediately, so I sip it around. And then after that, I'm going to try and get a nice even spread. And <clears throat> I might be abusing these paintbrushes. So I'm sorry for that. Hopefully it won't happen again. So yeah, that's why this paintbrush looks so horrible, because I'm stippling and just doing whatever and... Uh, I'm not treating them very nicely. Then again, these are very cheap paintbrushes, so meh. I'll just throw it away once I'm done with the Caranthia project, but pretty much all the silver paint on this entire project has been done with this single brush, so it's not too much of a waste. Yeah, so uh, my name is Mariska. I'm 25. I live in the Netherlands. And I have too many hobbies. Basically, uh, 
I love crafting, uh, I love making stuff with my hands. Uh, and most of it is related to costume building. But there are some other crafts and stuffs that are not necessarily related. But most of my free time I spend crafting away on a multitude of different costumes, armors, cosplays, LARP, historical, uh, everything that pretty much everything that catches my fancy at that moment. Um, I have been cosplaying now for about 10 years. Yeah, it's 2020, so 10 years. Um, and I have been LARPing for the past five, I think. Uh, my current, the current LARPs I play at are uh, Frontier, AOS Frontier, which is a sci-fi LARP um, that's sort of in the Netherlands, sort of Dutch, but it's held just over the border in Belgium. Um, I play at Vortex, which is the biggest or at least one of the biggest LARPs here in the Netherlands. Well, I'm a game master at uh, Estera. Currently, sort of, I'm just starting. I haven't actually reffed a single event yet. Um, and the next event is cancelled. So next year, hopefully 2021, I'll be game refing at Estera. Oh, I realized that last time I painted this thing, I stopped halfway. Maybe I'll have to finish that one as well. That's the really nice thing about using uh, elastic. That way you can just pull everything apart and get to the spots that are a bit more difficult to reach. But yeah, so I've been sewing for around 10 years. Um, my grandma was an actual seamstress, so I learned from her partially. Um, basically, I went to her about... Well, about 10 years ago, like, Grandma, I want to make this costume. She didn't really understand the concept of cosplay. So we made a costume that was sort of resembling the character I wanted, which was Italy from Hetalia. Um But we fashioned it up. So <laughs> instead of invisible closures, we put nice big gold buttons on there. And but for a very first cosplay, I guess it was pretty okay. Um, and well, yeah, that's pretty much where my love of sewing started. So um, in a weird way, I, I guess I'd say I'm about 50% taught by her and the other half I'm self-taught. Um, where I have actually learned to do the more difficult things from her, but the easy things I had to figure out myself because I did that, those at home. So that's why my hand, hand sewing might actually be very shoddy and um, I might do some stuff in weird ways, I guess. But everyone has their own way of doing things. Um, And uh, about three years ago, I came into contact with Twitch. Uh, I followed a few streamers, thought what they did really awesome. Uh, at that moment, I was working on my Skyrim cosplay. I made a Daedric armor cosplay. And um, I really liked watching streamers, so I figured I'd pay back to the community by starting to stream myself. And I loved it, although I never had many viewers. I usually had one or two people actually actively participate in chat and it was a lot of fun. Um, but then we moved um, from my student housing to an actual apartment and the internet was pretty crappy so I couldn't stream anymore. And when we finally got good internet I found that streaming didn't really fit my schedule anymore. So sadly I couldn't really continue that and that's I still have that problem. Um, for streaming, I think you have to reserve continuous strips of time, um, which I don't really have. I usually have about half an hour there, an hour there, and that doesn't really work if you want to stream. Because you have to set it up, think what you're going to do for a few hours, 
then actually have the time to do that set thing for a few hours. And so that's why I figured out uh, I wanted to see if I could YouTube stuff because in the same way it's sharing what I love to do and um, uh, putting stuff on video is something that you can do in between. I think, I hope. But we'll see about that in the coming time for however long I'm going to continue this. So yes, that's basically how I paint these shoes. Um, so last Saturday, because of LARPs getting cancelled, we decided to have a get-together event. Uh, this was the weekend that the LARP was supposed to be, so instead of being at actually being at the LARP, we decided to put up a live stream and just craft away the entire day. I started on, well, this blanket. It's reasonably sized. At the location this LARP is held at, we have a room that, that is designated as temple. But last time we were there, they forgot to turn on the heating. It was in December, so it was pretty cold in there. So what better thing to bring next time than blankets? Blankets with the logo of our goddess, of course. So that's what I'm doing here. I started this on the live stream last Saturday. Um, I'm basically chain stitching. Uh, focus. I'm basically chain stitching the image of our goddess on this blanket. As you can see, I'm near halfway. And this is blanket number one, because I have another blanket underneath there. Yeah, I might actually add some more, em more embroidery, as people on the live stream already suggested, because just this single line might not be too visible. It's kind of dark in there. And... So yes. But yeah, as I said, we had lots of fun last Saturday. Uh, I did this one when it was my time slot, but in the evening uh, we were all on Discord people that were crafting were putting on their webcams and uh, we had so much fun that I started working on some of the leather armor as well. I actually managed to do in a single evening uh, this entire part of stitching, um, which is actually quite a lot because usually I take two evenings of doing that, but it was so much fun and everyone was so crafty that, well, I managed to finish that in one evening. So now what's left on the front of this armor is I only have two uh, leftover pieces. So one piece goes over here, one piece goes over here to form the neckline. Then the top piece has, has to be attached to the bottom piece. And then we have a front of an armor. The back is already there. So that means that the straps have to be added and then the armor is actually done. This, this entire thing is also taking me one and a half year already, so it's time that, that that thing is starting to near completion. So yes, it was a very crafty and very, very fun last Saturday. Um, of course, if we were able to have the actual LARP, that would have been better, but I think, considering circumstances, that was a pretty good alternative. In the meanwhile, I also finished painting these completely. Um, so the next step of painting this is actually one of my favorite steps, uh, which is adding the grime and the dirt and just general weathering. Um, for this, I usually start with just some watered down black paint, um, water it down even further and just slap it on there in every crevice and ridge that dirt usually might be stuck in. Um, these are just well, mostly flat plates, so except for these ridges and the screw thingies, um, there's not that much dirt that can actually be added in, in the crevices. So, but still there's shoes, so the bottom parts uh, are still going to be dirty. So that is something that we will be painting. For that I usually just really wet my brush, dip it in some black paint and just Put it on there. Well, this is um, a bit more black than I had hoped it was. Oh well. Nice thing about it being watered down is that you can water it down even further. And 
because it's so light in water, it will dry up less uh, intense than when you paint it on. But for the parts that are really messed up, there's always toilet paper to fix it. There we go, none the wiser. That's more how it, what it usually looks like. <laughs> I was a bit over enthusiastic that first brush bit. As you can see, it's dry here, and well, the over enthusiastic big splotches of black paint not really visible anymore uh, if I just did the crevices on this this is all the dirt it would get and for shoes that's quite little so we should add some more paint and dirt and I will probably add some more brown later but for now let's just start with black wait actually let me do a comparison You see, just a tiny bit of black, whether it be here or here, I think especially the, the, the black here makes quite a big difference to no black at all. This looks very clean, very fake, and although I won't say that this looks real, it looks real-er. Now I'm going to paint this one. This weekend I'm going to see how many small tasks I can finish for Karantir. Um, I already did two. I gave Karantir some panty in his eyes so that, well, during the test fitting we noticed that you could really see his nose poking through and his glasses uh, behind uh, the face mask. So that's why I already added some panty in here so that it's a bit darker and a bit more mm, not mysterious I'm looking for the word oh you get what I mean the other small task I did is this is one of the upper leg plates um, it's supposed to go on the upper leg like this and we noticed that it separated pretty uh, a bit too far so I already glued uh, this one one step further so that it can't separate as much as it used to do and next up I'm going to remake one of the fabric drapey thingies that goes in the front because we test fitted the previous one and it wasn't wide enough so I'm going to see uh, next up I'm going to see if we can do that
one new flap. Something that I'm also pretty proud of, even though I did manage to mess one up, is the fact that I even made the belts for Caranthier. Then it still needs some actual holes, but I think, honestly, that it's a pretty neat belt. It's dyed on both sides, it's, it's slicked on both sides. The only downside is, they are too short. They fit my boyfriend, and he wears them regularly, but they don't fit around the bulk of the armor. <laughs> so I have to think whether I want to remake them and make them longer. But the leather that I have laying around here is not long enough for that, so then I need to buy new leather. Or um, I'm going to just go with it and put the belts underneath the armor, which the fact that there are supposed to be two belts um, where one has a decorative diamond on front means that the belts are visible. They're, well, one of them is supposed to go underneath, but the other one is clearly supposed to be going over with the diamond on the front, which if they're both going underneath is not something I can show. This one is the right size. But yeah, about the belt situation, I'm still doubting. I mean, even if I make new ones, I could probably just sell these or use them. Um, yeah, they're just proper, normal belts. On the other hand, if I remake them, I can just reuse the buckle. That saves me buying a new buckle. But then I can't sell them. Choices, choices, choices. So for Caranthier, I want to make uh, leather overlays over the gloves. These gloves were made by tracing um, my boyfriend's hand um, and just cutting it out of fabric twice, sewing it together. Because this is a very stretchy fabric, um, you can just use well the size of his hand and you don't need to put any extra allowances in to allow for the thickness of the hand. But for Attaching all the armor parts of his hands. Let's see here. I have the parts that will partially form his hand So we'll get four of these here and then We'll get those there, but to attach those I want to put a leather layer underneath um, and for that I am looking for the hand that I traced and I make quite a lot of paper patterns uh, for these costumes, as you can see. And I usually try to save all of them, so hopefully his hand is somewhere in here. Let's see. I mark them partially, but um, just from memory I can say what most of these parts are. For example, this... Uh, let me see if I can show it. This part is one of these, uh, this one. So, but let's see if his hand is somewhere in here. With the armors uh, as big as this one, you usually end up with quite a lot of pattern pieces. So you can see it's the bottom of the torso, uh, this is the front. I quite like working with patterns, especially if there are pieces that uh, need to be repeated multiple times or which you want to be able to see the skill of between the different pieces working with paper patterns is great I think well there we have part of a hand but I cut the fingers off oh well where are the fingers you see I marked them so that's one that's five then two, three and four. Great. So that's why I save all these patterns. You never know if you need them again. This is what I'm going to use for the top of the hands. This might look like leather, <coughs> but it actually isn't. It is, well, I think a pretty high quality fake leather. Um, it's actually 
pretty much indistinguishable from leather. Slightly less stretchy, though it does have some stretch to one side. But it's a more felt-like back. This is called craft skin and, well, I love working with it. Also, yes, I know my hands are small. <laughs> um, let's see, so I only need... I measured, or at least I thread traced where the rest of the armor is on his hand. So everything that is above the green line needs to be covered with, with the leather. So then I think the best thing to do is just cut it like that. Thinking about the movement. Oh, let's just do it and then see where it goes. Um, then we need something like... I am only going to cover the top of the hands and the leather will end up somewhere halfway over his finger so it just covers the top. So we don't need to do any difficult stuff with actual glove making. Because making gloves is difficult. I've never successfully made a pair unless of course it's from very stretchy materials. But non-stretchy glove making? Nope. I might need to do the thumb separately because of the extra movement. Well, we can always cut it off later. Maybe I should not have done this with pen. If I want to make them any wider, you will continue to see the pen. It's only <laughs> these things you only realize after doing them. Oh well. Just realized something else. I want to make the fingers so that they can slip over his actual fingers. So maybe I should have cut this with seam allowance. Or I just sew the other part on the inside of this. Maybe I should think more before doing stuff. Oh well. I think that might actually work if I sew it to the insides. We'll see. This is, well, part of his hand. So the leather will go underneath this and I can stick this to this and then I can stick all of these parts to here. And then I still need to make parts for the fingertips. <coughs> Something like that. So that's my idea for the hand and to make sure that this leather stays on top of the finger. I wanted to also put a little tab about, well, this size on the bottom so that he can just hook the leather parts over the, the fabric fingers. And hopefully that way it will all stay put. So I did some fitting and I'm actually surprised at how well it does fit. I think I need to get the thumb off because of the movement. Uh, these three fingers are actually pretty okay. But the pink is too small and in the wrong direction. It needs to be, well, more like the other finger straight ahead. Because right now, when uh, when he wears it and he holds his hand normally, this one really bunches up. It only sits normally the moment that he bends his finger. So we'll cut that part off and remake it. We just stitch it together there, I mean. To have some repairs in an armor like this would not be unthinkable also. Let's just do that. See it was oh, a 
appears to actually be exactly the right size. As in uh, the right length, not the right width, of course. Um, let's see. Something like that. Now his pinky finger is a lot wider than the rest. So I might have to cut that even smaller, but I think that that is already looking better. Um, yes, let me fit this. So this fits. Um, the thumb actually fits pretty okay, so I don't have to cut the thumb off. That sounds pretty drastical if you take it out of context. Anyway, um, <laughs> I probably have to make a slightly bigger dart in here and then the thumb will fit as well. So now to make sure that the leather actually stays on the fingers, especially at the top, so that when he walks around, this just doesn't flap all over. I originally wanted to make, well, basically see if I could finish the end. Um, just have a piece of leather all the way around. But as you can already see, that's probably going to be quite difficult to sew. Because, well, I've got excess fabric and it's all, well, still rather tiny sewing and I don't really feel like that doing that. So I think what I might do is just make tiny strips around the top of his finger. Um, the fingertips will also be covered with warbler, so that will probably grab on a bit more as well. And I think that that might just work. It's also slightly less finicky with everything having to fit perfectly in terms of length and width. And Let's just see if we can attach all of the fingers. So for one hand we got all the finger loops. This way the leather will, well, stay stuck to the glove. And I can still glue all the warbler bits to the leather. So it's Monday evening, that for me is the last day of my weekend. And I actually managed to do quite a bit of leather sewing, which is not cut out here, but it's something. But I did forget to mention, I actually painted another layer on these as well. So now instead of just some black dirt, there is also brown dirt and I'm not sure if I find them dirty enough yet. I might add some more uh, paint because I still think it's a bit shiny. Um, but we'll see. I guess I'll have to do... Well, next time we do a full test fitting, I'll check it. But yeah, this was also some small cut on tier thing that I managed to finish this weekend. So all in all, I think not that bad. I did another paint layer on these. We did the things for the hands. I managed uh, fabric over the eyes, so you don't see his eyes when he wears it. I managed to do another bit of the, the fabric thingy on the bottom there. Oh yeah, and I glued leg parts, which means that, well, for a weekend, that's actually not bad. You know those tasks where you think, eh, I'll finish it later, and then you don't actually finish them for multiple months? Well, today I'm actually going to finish one of those tasks. Um, I present the problem. Um, this is uh, for Karant here. This is the upper leg of the costume. Uh, you can see it attaches with two elastic bands and the parts will come apart and then... And, well, anyway, this is his upper leg. Below his upper leg, we have a knee. And the problem is that the knee can't just hover somewhere, it has to be attached. And I have been thinking about how to attach this, but I never came up with a solution and just put the task off in its entirety, thinking, eh, I'll finish something else first. But we're getting near completion and this has to be attached to each other in s at some point in time, so why not do this now? So first I thought, well, I can just glue this to here. The problem is, when he sits down, this will just all flop over and we'll have a knee that's sticking out. It's not pretty. So this should somehow be loose, but I don't want it to, well, sag down his leg either. So it still has to be holed up and the easiest thing to attach it to is, well, his upper leg. So I came up with the following solution. I'm going to attach an elastic strip that I'll sew in a circle to the bottom 
office so that I can attach it to his leg below his knee. And then I'll put another strip like that that I will attach somewhere in the back of... I, I need an extra hand. That I'll attach somewhere here so that it's being holed up. So then it's attached to his leg on the bottom and then it's attached to the part above it on the top. So then I think it will stick to his leg on the bottom. But then when he sits down, this will flop over. But the knee will stay down. So that's hopefully the idea. Um, this should work, I think. Um, so let's get on to it. Um, I measured his leg and it's around 44 centimeters in diameter, no circumference. So because this is elastic, I'm going to take approximately 42 centimeters, I guess. And then I'll sew it in a circle. Because well, elastic fits best when it has to, well, expand a bit. Mm -hmm. well, let's sew this together. Now the elastic has to be attached to the knee itself, and well, that's quite easy. I grabbed a scrap piece of foam, and I'm just going to glue it like that. I'm just using super glue for this. For most of the other parts, I used Bison Tix, which is a. How is it called again? I should know the name of this glue. Anyway, I used Bison Tix, uh, which is uh, a glue that you apply to two parts, both sides, let it dry, and then you can stick everything together. But the jar that I was using was pretty much empty and is now dried out. So I'm trying to see if I can finish everything with the small bit, bits of super glue that I still have laying around. Luckily, I don't think there's a lot left to glue on this costume, so hopefully we'll finish it. I think that's in. just have to do the elastic to the top but for that I think I will have to fit it to him because then I can see the exact distance that I'll need. So remember how in the previous segment I said I would finally finish the task of attaching the knee to the upper legs? Well as you can see we didn't actually finish it. It's now a week or maybe two weeks even later and there's still two separate pieces. Um, <laughs> So let's actually finish that today. Um, just like what I did with the elastic band on the bottom, I already finished the other leg. I made some mistakes there, so hopefully we will not repeat those here. So again, it's the idea of having a piece of elastic that I attach to the knee with a bit of foam. Um, we'll make this into a loop. Attach the foam there and then do the same principle here. Um, that way, when he bends his, uh, his leg, this can stretch and we can actually have the knee move independently of the upper leg. So, um, yeah, let's start with cutting out some foam and actually making the loop for the knee. I really like the system of just having stuff with elastic stitched in circles and attach it to somewhere. I mean, it's quite versatile and when it's at the back, you don't see it. Um, and it's really easy to make. So now let's stitch this. The stitching is done. We have attached this. Now here's the first mistake I made with the other leg is I, I immediately glued this here, which meant that as soon as I wanted to make the loop for the other elastic band, 
I had to stitch this while this was fully attached. It is possible, it's not the most handy thing. So for this leg, I guess I'll first measure out the actual length that's needed, stitch this and then glue them on, on both at the same time. So I've got a bag with scrap pieces from the rest of the costume and well these pieces are perfect to attach these kind of things. You see I think this one here will make a nice piece. Also excuse me if there's more background noise than usual. Uh, usually when I'm filming I close the window but it was ridiculously warm these past few days so right now I need all the cold that we can get from outside. But, but I live next to a busy road, uh, which includes lots of ambulances, so excuse me if there is more noise than usual. So basically the idea is to create this. It's attached here, simply like this. Now I have to make sure that both legs are around the same length. Uh, how does this fit on my desk? I think that's about the same. So then it should be around this length. Also we want as much elastic in between as possible because with the other leg I already noticed that there's when he sits down the elastic has to stretch quite a bit. Uh, so the more the elastic can actually stretch the less force there is on the foam itself. Which is good because we don't want the foam to rip. Let's so we'll just do it like that. Mm -hmm. I will draw these out so that when we're actually going to glue them, we can easily put them back where they should go. Yep. Now let's stitch this part. So now we have a set of two pieces of foam connected by two pieces of elastic. And now I also should not repeat the mistake that I made on the other leg, which is to plainly glue them on like this. Because then I realized that this part, this elastic band, which has to go around the leg, became unusable. So I had to unpick this and reattach it by hand. So this time we'll glue it like this. On to the gluing. And there we go two knee pieces attached to the upper legs. <laughs> I'm really happy with this because, well, this was a task that has been staring at me for three months now. So yes, another task for Karantir done. So what I have been doing in the past week, um, instead of, well, gluing that sort of stuff, I have been doing a tiny bit of work on the hands. So these are the gloves and these patches of leather go over it. And as you can see, I have attached many finger loops. The last update I gave you guys about this was that I was going to make the finger loops at the top. But when fitting it, we realized that when he would bend his hand uh, and then put his finger straight again, uh, there was a bit of excess leather, so it would stay up. So I added another set of loops and now the leather actually stays down on his fingers. So that's another quite big task done. Also I'm one of those people who's a sucker for lists. So my desktop is filled with various lists of stuff and things and here you can see my project lists for Kranthier, Weavers and in general which projects I'm currently sort of working on. We attached the knee to the upper leg check and that's the best part of making lists the checking things off so anyway you can also see here pretty much the tasks that still have to be done for these costumes well they're pretty much done um, for the hands the fingertips need to be made from warbla the fingers need to be attached together some of the details still need to be painted on the fingertips for the upper legs and knees, the upper legs still need, need to be attached to the belt so that they don't sag down when he wears them. For the, the cape skirt kind of thing, they have to be frayed because Karantir does not do pretty fabric. And I need to make a diamond on the belts. Then I have a nice to have list. Uh, 
I need to make an extra edge on the bottom of the shin pieces. Well, we need to make the navigating instrument and the staff. Those are big projects on their own, so if I eventually start on them, they will probably get a list like this on their own. For we vests, for the skirt, I need to make an extra flap to cover the top of the, the leg parts. Uh, I need still need to wrap some rope around her neck and upper arms. I need to do a lot of work on the face. Uh, and then once the face is done, I can attach the hair. So that's pretty much the idea for these two costumes. Maybe next month I will be doing some more work on Wee Vest, but we'll see. Because next month is also a month in which I'm probably going to start some new projects. But anyway, June is still not over. We have a week left. Uh, let's see how much we can still finish in June. Karantir has this diamond shaped thing on his belt, which is what I'll be making today with cast plastic. The easiest way to make things with cast plastic is to have a mold, pour the plastic in, wait till it's dried, and then you can pull it out and you have your object. The thing is, I did not have any diamond shaped kind of object laying ar around, so I made my own with uh, simple clay um, that I used a ruler with a 90 degree angle to gently pat the clay into shape. So now we will be casting in this and let's see how that goes. Because I'm not really sure how much plastic I'm going to need, I am going to make a bit extra. That's also so that I can fill up this mold, which is a tiny mold that I made from some wisdom teeth. They were my own, so eh. I have a bag full of teeth somewhere that I made from this mold and we can always use a bit extra. We're going to mix up some plastic. I really like working with this plastic because it's it cures within 10 minutes. Um, it's easy to work with. Mm, I guess 8 grams should do it. So that's 4 on 4 because you can just mix it by weight. thing I do not like about it is this jar in combination with how runny it is because it's always a mess pouring this one. Part A pours more easily so that's why I usually prefer to pour part B first and then pour part A. I occasionally pour a bit too much of part B and then I can just pour more part A. The working time of this is three minutes, so from the moment that I pour part A in, I've got three minutes to um, pour everything, uh, mix and pour. Let's see, um, 3.7, 3 3.6, that's good. be enough to also pour the teeth, but we'll see. It's pretty windy outside. surprised it seems to be exactly enough for everything. So now we let this dry, uh, cure for about 10 minutes and then it's already done. The molds have set, time for demolding. Luckily that's also very easy. We just slightly bend the clay and then it already comes free. Ah, 
looks quite nice. The clay is not ideal for curing molds. As you can see, there is a bit of residue in here, and this will is also still a bit sticky. But if we leave that to air dry for a bit longer, it should be okay. Let's see what the teeth did. These teeth are very difficult to get right, but considering most applications are for the auto costumes, it doesn't matter if they miss a few legs or whatever. And there we go. Oh, they actually look quite okay. missing some legs. But the nice thing if you demold these relatively quickly as in within an hour the plastic is quite pliable so you can just pull everything off really nicely. And with just the tiniest bit of work we've got a tooth. And then after this, I can put a bit of a wash over it, and then you end up with this. And then when you put a hole in the teeth and string them together, you end up with this. Isn't it a pretty earring for a very pretty look? Um, so yes, this is the mask for my Uru costume. I did not make it. This was made by Ungebilde. She makes the best Uru masks. Um, but I did decide to fancy it up a bit by adding my own teeth. My Uru, uh, I'm playing a surgeon, so I figured a few teeth earrings would suit her. The only downside of this uh, plastic is that it yellows very quickly. So. These teeth were made earlier, and these teeth were made today. They have been laying on my desk, so they have seen some light, but not necessarily a whole lot. And I guess these are one or two months old, so you can see how quick the yellowing goes. But they are teeth, so in this case it doesn't matter. For the diamond, we will be painting it anyways, so it doesn't matter if that yellows either. So yes, now we can get on to cleaning this and then painting it. This past week I have been doing some work on Karantir's hands. Um, all the loops are attached and I fitted it. It fit pretty good. And then I got to attach the leather to the actual well, hand part. I think just by attaching this, it already looks a lot more complete. And with the glove that goes underneath, I think we have a great basis to glue all the warbler parts on. So hopefully, coming month, July, we can actually finish the hands. And that's the last bigger part of Karantir that needs to be finished. And with this we end the month of June. Vlogging like this makes me realize that months really do pass quickly. and. It's both the case of getting done more than I anticipated in the month, but also hoped to be further along. It's weird. Uh, especially now vlogging and I can see exactly what I did on what day. It's, it's interesting to see. So I hope you enjoyed watching it, seeing my progress as I go through all of these costumes. Hopefully in next month I have some very interesting things to show you and some new projects to start. And hopefully maybe finish some projects. That's That would be a really nice goal. Um, so let's see and I hope to see you again next month. But if you have any suggestions, whether that be more on my project related side or more on my video editing, these are the very first few videos that I edit so I'm still learning a lot. But also if you have any suggestions or would like to leave a comment on my costumes, I'd be more than happy and I will reply to them all. So 
Um, yeah, thanks for watching and hopefully see you next month.